What's up everyone, this is Young Electrician and this is six things I wish I knew before taking the journeyman exam. Let's get into it. One. The exam's not as difficult as everyone makes it out to be. And I know some of you guys hear that and you think, hey, I failed the test a couple of times. It is extremely difficult. So hear me out. I'm not saying that the test is not difficult at all. I'm saying people make it out to be way harder than it actually is. And I think that kind of discourages us. So what I want people to understand is that the t test isn't that difficult. You just have to study the proper things and you have to put a game plan together for yourself to study properly. The majority of what the test is, is it's going to test how well you can navigate the NEC. This is very important. It is very important that you learn to navigate the NEC quickly. You only have about three minutes a question. And we'll cover this one again in a little bit. The majority of it is navigating the NEC. You're going to have a little bit of safety, some stuff on troubleshooting, some equations, and just some general knowledge things. But primarily, you're going to be navigating that code book. If you can navigate that code book well, you're going to get away with not getting some of those other answers like the equations. Two, people say that you don't have enough time for each question. You actually do have enough time for each question. It gives you about three minutes a question. But the beautiful thing about this is some of those questions you're already going to know. Some of those questions, if you've been practicing navigating the code book, you're going to find in 10, 15, 30 seconds. And let me tell you this. If you get to about a minute into a question and you can't find it, guess and skip trust me I, I know somebody who just failed their test and they said they were taking their time trying to answer every question correctly now this is what's going to happen two things one uh, if you get that question wrong or those couple of questions wrong but you actually you're able to find the rest of the questions or at least 70 of them you're going to pass you're going to pass you have to understand there are some questions in the exam that are made to trip you up and you have to pass them. If it's taking you longer than 60 seconds to find a question or an answer to a question, skip it. Just guess, mark it, skip it, move on. Because imagine this, if you could find, if you go through it, and let's say you find half of the questions or half of the answers to the questions, and you found them all within less than a minute, that means you still have half of the answers to go back and look through, right? Not too good of a spot to be in, but the amount of time, that means you spent less than an hour to find 50 questions. Now you have around three hours to go find the rest of the questions. Does that make it better? You know you have 50 questions correct. That means you only have to get 20 of the other questions right in order to pass. And you have three hours to basically find 20 questions. Makes it a lot easier, huh? Three, and I just mentioned this, some questions are designed to trip you up. This is why you got to keep that limit of when you're looking for an answer to under a minute. Minute tops. Because if you get caught up looking for the answers to those questions that are specifically designed to trip you up, I've known people to do this. If you, if you get caught up doing that, you are going to run out of time. If it seems like a very difficult question, guess and skip it. Four, practice tests are a must. I've taken journeyman prep courses where you have a, maybe less than 100 questions. And it doesn't do much. They teach you the math. They teach you uh, uh, some of the troubleshooting stuff. Uh, they teach you a lot of cool stuff. But if you only have like a 50 to 100 questions to go over, it's not enough for most people. It wasn't enough for me. I recommend you guys download a program, buy a, a multiple choice journeyman prep book, whatever it may be. You want to practice navigating the code book by answering questions. You want to get familiar with the table of contents. You want to get familiar with the back of the books, the index. You want to get familiar with just flipping those pages, kind of familiarizing yourself with where everything's at. That's going to be one of the most important things. I, I heard an instructor once say, actually on my podcast, he said this. Uh, if you are able to get every book question, that means the questions that are asked in the NEC where you could actually find the answer in the NEC. If you get all those right, you could get everything else wrong. You'll still pass. I'm not sure how true that is. Don't go trying that. But it gives perspective on how important the NEC is, how important knowing how to navigate the NEC is. Number five, practice finding answers using these three methods. One, the back of the book. This is the one I think we're all familiar with, uh, subject indexing. You go into the index, you're looking for the subject, and you're, you're navigating the code book that way. The second one is 
table of contents. I actually didn't know about this when I took the journeyman exam. This is kind of funny because I passed the journeyman exam and I passed it in an hour. So I had a whole hour left over because I was just crunching on my, my preparation. I was using the back of the book method. You know, it was working out for me. But uh, the table of contents, it's so easy to find answers. Sometimes you can find an answer within like 15 seconds. It's ridiculous. So practice the back of the book method, table of contents, and uh, the other one is called reverse search. That means when they give you a question like, where is this table found? And then it gives you like four different code sections. Just go and search those code sections. Flip really quickly to each of those code sections. Find out which one it is. That's it. That's reverse search. It's easy. So back of the book method. That means the uh, subject indexing, table of contents, reverse search. Six. This one's very important. I recommend you take a prep course. The reason why is you don't know what's on the exam. Even if you get really good at navigating the code book, that's awesome. But just the, the, the nervousness that could come from not knowing what's on the exam, that could trip you up. You don't know how you're going to feel when you get to that test site. I mean, even with the prep course you get there, you can be extremely nervous. But if you feel confident in navigating the code book, if you feel confident in answering these uh, troubleshooting questions, safety, some of these equations, uh, the maintenance questions, you're going to feel good. You're going to feel more confident. So the more confident you are in uh, how you prepare and when you come to the end of your preparation, the more confident you may be when you get to the actual test site. So I recommend taking a prep course because they are going to pull that curtain back for you and kind of reveal what's going to be on that test. And one of the best things I've ever done for my career was taking that journeyman prep course at WECA uh, a number of years ago because it did two things. One, it prepared me and over prepared me for the journeyman uh, exam. So I passed. Awesome. Two, it opened my eyes to the importance of courses. You're going to this place and you're getting this wealth of information from people that have compiled this information to help you uh, circumvent all of the trouble of learning all of these other things. I remember when I was taking the journeyman exam for the first time. I was trying to look up on YouTube to get some information and I couldn't find anything on YouTube. There's a ton of stuff on YouTube now. Go check out the Electrical Code Coach if you haven't. He has a whole free course on YouTube. He's super awesome. Hopefully I get him on the podcast one day. That'll be awesome. Uh, so there's a bunch of stuff now. But when I was taking the exam for the first time, there was nothing on YouTube that I could find. The only thing I could find, it would be guys sharing their stories. And they would say things like, I bought a stack of books and I just kept reading them. I locked myself in the basement for hours every day and I just kept reading all the books I could find. And um, and that was discouraging. So I was like, bro, I am not locking myself in no basement. I'm not reading a bunch of random books and hoping I could, you know, get the answer. So I'm so grateful. <laughs> so I'm so grateful for test uh, prep courses because uh, it helps you just bypass all of that. And these prep courses only teach you what's on the exam so that's super awesome and i don't think that i'm promoting anything to you because i don't teach a prep course that'd be awesome if i could one day but i don't so uh if you want to know my recommendations comment below and ask me and i will tell you what i recommend for a prep course hey guys if you guys like this uh type of information and you guys want more on journeyman prep i also have information on the c10 contracting uh getting clients getting your contracting license whatever it may be if you guys have if you guys like this content please like please subscribe please share this with anybody you think will benefit from it and uh yeah check out the podcast peace